Hi, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen, and welcome to a, uh, another painting of birds and flowers, one of my favorite all-time subjects. If it wasn't for birds and flowers, it'd be birds and flowers and scrolls. I love to do scrolls as well. Today, what we're going to do is follow right along with our uh, techniques of Painted Simply. Those of you who have painted with it with me uh, along these type of, of lessons, this will be a little bit familiar. I'm going to do a few different things uh, with this one. We're going to concentrate again on some of our casual brush. What I've done here so far is I've taken a 16 by 20 canvas and I've sketched on, I just sketched it on with pencil here, uh, a design with... Um, I love this little female Eastern Tohi. I painted her uh, last week on one with some scrolls on a Hindelopen influence, and I really enjoyed her. And we just happened to see one uh, out at the bird feeder, and I was like, oh, what? I haven't seen that before. And then I looked it up, and, and it was one that was migrating through, and uh, I was just kind of influenced me. And I want to capture her a couple times. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that color. I enjoyed that orangey yellow band across her and so I'm thinking some orange yellow uh, roses here soft we'll put them on a cool background uh, we'll put her with the browns and some stems and stuff going through here not really too sure about everything so we'll get right into it and we'll get it and we'll give it a try I'm going to be doing some vignetting I think also in here that's one reason why I chose a larger canvas now I didn't do anything to this canvas other than just go right directly uh, and, and sketch on top this is uh, one that I, that linen canvas, a white uh, linen uh, canvas would work really well uh, for this as well. If you have a really rough one, you might want to fill it up with just a little bit of texture medium and white like you've seen me do before. Uh, not leave any ridges, just fill it up smooth because we have some details and stuff in here that we want to capture. For the background, actually, first off here for the colors and stuff, I'm just going to be using my classic. Uh, this palette's been in here for six months now. It's done, it's done a lot of DVDs for me. I'm just going to be using my six colors, beginning uh, palette of the uh, Painted Simply. I'll also be using a, a lot of paper towels. Um, but we have our, our, our white and our black, our cool red, which is our red uh, violet, our naphthol red light, which is warm, our Hansa yellow, our Thedal blue, and of course a cap of nice dirty extender. Um, I had a letter, a, a wonderful letter, and I was like, what is that gray stuff that Dave keeps touching into in his palette? That's just dirty extender, okay? That's just dirty extender. I love it. I love it when you guys, um, you uh, write questions to me and uh, we get the chance to answer those and we get a chance to uh, correspond back and forth with your learning and stuff. So it's really a lot of fun. So I'm going to be coming in here and I'm going to deposit a cool color first. So I'm looking for, um, you know, the cool color on our palette is our, our red violet, but I don't want a real red violet uh, background. Let me shove this up here just a little bit. I don't want a real red violet background. I want a gray, which is going to be our black and white here. And uh, so I'm going to take some black and white. Now I want it slightly to the right side, uh, to the right side, to the light side here. So I'm going to add just a little bit of black here and quite a bit of white uh, to this color. I could, if this uh, um, becomes a little bit too much violet for us, we can, we can get a little bit more violet. We can toss in and still get a nice gray but change the color with just a tiny bit because this is very cool. This is a very, very cool gray, kind of a pretty gray, cool gray, but just the tiniest bit of Hansa into this will really shift this color over quite a bit, just little bits of that that will gray it, but that will just light, slightly, slightly warm it a little bit more. Now, that's a pretty color. I probably will want a little bit more white out here. I have my black out there because I'm going to vary this color a little bit. So I will want a little bit more white out here. And so we can model into some of that. I'll wipe off my knife here. And I did it with my knife this time. You see me do it with my brush all the time. I did it with my knife here because one of the things is I'm going to make these flowers, these roses in my mind here, a little bit more delicate. And because I want the flowers a little bit more delicate, I don't want to have too much movement into my background. So when I want a lot of movement into my background, I brush mix. And you see me do that all the time. When I want something a little bit more delicate, the flowers to be more delicate, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to palette knife mix up the color a little bit, uh, which uh, takes away a lot of the interest, but it allows allow me to paint more delicate flowers. So that's why I'm doing it. We'll take a three-quarter inch brush here. 
we'll take some of our our nice delicate slightly cooled uh, gray color and I'm gonna go right up into right up next to but not into the roses so this time we'll paint a little bit of the negative area here we can go through the leaves and we'll go through uh, some of these outside areas here just well as we get out here I'm going to start heading maybe a bit more of this white right out here like this we'll let this color just lighten out up here like this and just fade out because I want it to I want it to vignette almost here there we go a lot like that we'll soften of course we're not we're going to work some more into this background but you can really take a little bit of that white and dump it out there too which is nice so that you just don't end on a on the color you can keep that but see that that's very delicate coloring in there very soft coloring that's what I'm looking for a little bit heavier color down in here into the center right around where I'm going to be putting those flowers right up to the bird here and usually I go right into the bird you see me go through the bird here several times you know in a lot of the videos and this time I'm going to paint it negatively right up here you're an artist and as an artist you try to do all different kinds of things and capture all different kinds of looks and this is this is just another look I like to capture it is um, more along the lines of what we call all premier coup painting uh, almost like a poster painting a painting the background here and this is a real pretty background and I like that Let's try not to forget the, the feet this time. Now, as I come back on the bird here, through here, I'm gonna lighten up just a bit. So we'll get over here towards our lighter color. We'll go up and around, go up and around her there just a bit, like that. We get out right out in here, we'll take that out. Then I'll just take a little bit of extra white in my brush and we'll just soften the exchange out there. So it ends out there, almost vignetted there. Okay, so we'll take that out to there. That's good. So a little bit of the lighter. I'll just go right over that leaf. I'll, I'll still see it there. And we'll come down. Maybe we're going to have another leaf that we might, we might want to uh, put in some dark here. Right in this area here, right around. And around this one, right out to here. Okay. And then we'll, we'll work out to uh, some of our lighter grays out here. Right out to here. Let those go back lighter and vignette out there like that. That's kind of pretty. Different look here. Down in through here, we'll, again, we'll let it lighten up to, as well. Just grab some white and I like so as I'm heading out to my edges here I like to vignette that out I like to get that uh, so it's not so heavy so even this lower part of this flower here might head we might put a little bit of that darkness right up in here right in between this flowers and those leaves there but uh, a little bit for that contrast there but immediately start to head that color out towards this light Towards our other light here and let it just fade out. I don't want it to die immediately. And then gives a great almost a, you know when you when you uh, vignette a painting like this, it almost gives a like a watercolor feel to the painting here, like that. And you know, this is something that a lot of our, our painters, a lot of our artists who started out in decorative painting. We don't do enough of this type. Now I'm going to darken just a little bit and we'll shoot in just a little darker color right in to some of this area right in there just for contrast. And again, I'll keep it kind of soft. So I'll just run my brush there kind of softly through there just so I don't want to get a whole bunch of movement into the ground, into the background, which I normally do. I normally like a lot of movement, but this one I want to give a softer expression here so I can paint delicate flowers. Okay, so that's got those up there. Now I'm going to start mostly up here into the top and work our way down. But I'm going to come through and I'm going to assign a little color here and there. I'm going to take a, 
a little bit of my uh, Hansa yellow, and I'm going to assign some Hansa yellow right to some areas of the flowers in here in these roses. I have my mind here for these roses. I've seen Katherine Klein paint them, and I really enjoy her painting, especially it's a, using the uh, gouache colors and stuff that she does. I really enjoy her painting. So I'm going to push a little bit of that yellow into some of this these roses here. There's also some very soft reds. Even we could take some of these grays here. This soft gray right with this. Make this soft pinky kind of red. And we'll just add a little bit of that into this as well. Puts a little color and I know that's a bit bright but we'll paint down into this. We'll soften that out into that one. We'll, we'll soften it out. We'll do this art thing all over it. But this gives you an idea for the contrast that these flowers can have. Contrast but also a softness that these flowers can have here. And we'll just work through maybe a little bit of our light, um, light background color in here just to soften through some of those right there like that and this will give you an idea for, with some like I say like some of the contrast so that we can uh, look at the bird so it's just a way of getting some color in there and then the bird will play up against uh, some of this coloring here let's get a little softer just a whisper of that out here out like that okay and uh, more of a red red violet We'll, we'll answer the question here of where the uh, centers are in these flowers. That center is going to be pointing down right in here, right in there like that. This one will be right in here. Boom, right there, maybe a touch of yellow, just doom, right there like that. This one will make it a little softer. We'll push it back just a bit here, but a little bit softer this one just a little bit in there so you see where those centers are okay and we can uh, drop in we can take some brown color and which is red and black so I'll take my red right here we'll add a little bit of the black to it also like a little yellow into that as well we'll get an idea of a good brown here Okay. Yeah, that's kind of good. That, and if I was going to leave the brown on any side, we might want to leave it slightly to the yellowish side here. Not quite dark, dark there. We can soften it with a little bit of the gray. Just take that and just drop it right into some of your gray. And this will give you a, a good idea here. We want this stem here. It's going to come through like that. And that's you know where she's going to be gripping onto this stem. Here. and we want to just I, I like to use a big brush when I draw these because they're very skip you know this kind of skip around here and I, I like to use the big brush because it's very sketchy and then out through here I mean I just and I just use the corner of it here like that and I like that and that sketchy and how it fades away out there like that okay so and we'll just draw some of this out here you know maybe that one is going to come right out there like that okay uh, i like to be uh, when i when i do stems and i do um these things with uh you know with the the roses like this these big rose stems and i like to be um very casual and not precise, like a, uh, well, let's say we'll put it in like a botanical painter would paint it. I like to be very artistic with them and not perfect with them. And so uh, that's why I like to use the brush and very sketchy. And we can come back in and add more and do things, of course, which we will be, you know, doing that. But uh, I like that artistic part of it. I think that's works very well now let's just go also let's grab some of our yellow black let's just make a real soft uh, green here yellow and black here 
And I like that uh, particular type. I'm just going to add a little bit of, because the violets are complement to it and will tone it down. So and the violets are really, really pretty inside those yellow greens, especially to tone it down. So I'm just going to add a little bit of my gray, even my gray color to it here. Make a real soft yellow green. Let's add a bit of a, and you see I'm doing a little bit more mixing on the palette this time than I normally do. I usually paint something into position. But here we'll do a little bit of mixing onto the palette, just a bit. And let's come in and let's kind of shape in the idea of where we're going to have some of these yellowy green leaves, like one right up there, uh, one coming right up here, here, like that, maybe that one there. Um, you know, some other ones coming out and through here, here, like that. So nice. Change the color up a bit. Change the green up a bit. Let's add some greens right back in here. We don't have to be specific up in here with the leaves yet. Um, I want to just toss in some color up into here. Not as specific as we were out there. Okay, so maybe there's going to be a leaf right here. So we'll drop that in there. Maybe one that's going to come out this way. Here. There, like that. And we'll work some more. Maybe we'll get a little darker. Darker green maybe a little bit more grayer coloring of the leaves down here so the leaf color changes and that's going to add interest to it so let's get a little grayer down here let some of these leaf colors change this before we go in and paint the bird i want her to be uh, really a quite a focal point in this painting so i'm going to want to paint her start her painting pretty quick here but this will give me some ideas of some coloring in here and then how much i can take on her how much I can do. So I'm going to just pull out here and we'll let some of this just fade out as well. Just work our color through and just let that start to soften out as well. So those aren't quite as perfect shape. They start to get some lost edges there. Let's do a little more green. Maybe some touches of it up in here. Fill up just a bit. Maybe some back, very grayed, lost ones back through here. Very grayed and lost. Don't really give it too much shape. Just give a little movement there. Like that, very lost. Here. Bring one back up higher here. And we'll we'll paint it with a little bit more a uh, little bit smaller brush here. But uh, this will just help us get the shape in. So I'm just and when I do these shapes, I just you know start sometimes I use the flat and come in like that, you know, to start the shape. Sometimes I um, Pull, like you see, I pulled the shape out from here. Let's do a, a, a set of soft ones right out here. Just use uh, the brush here and just get soft out like that. And just angle out. And try not to have too much of a line out there on those. We want those to... And I have a dirty finger there, which isn't good. There, so <clears throat> I'll have to uh, take a little white little color here, a little white on the brush, and we'll take that right back out, soften that out. Here. There we go. Just say goodbye to that. But, ooh, I like a little bit of that moving through here. That's kind of nice. Just get some uh, very soft little movement here. Okay.
<clears throat> so this brown that's in here was really going to help us also with her and in defining up her. Let's um get some grays into the outer parts of our flowers here. And that'll help cover up a little bit of our I want to cover up my outside pattern lines. You can leave them for now. For those of you who haven't painted these types of roses with me before, you can leave those. Leave your pattern lines on there. That's no problem. But I'm going to soften some of mine out just with some grace. There we go. That's good. Now we'll come up. So we set that in. We set her in there. We're going to uh, go in and, and start working on her. I'm going to set that three-quarter inch brush aside there for just a minute. And uh, let's go grab another one. Here's an eight. This will work. A ten or an eight. I'm going to stay slightly to the big side. Okay. Um, either one of those will work. I'm not a real big, uh, you know, really, you know, stiff as a teacher as, par as far as what size of brush. It doesn't make a difference because I usually use corners and edges and stuff. The larger the brush... The, the softer the painting is and the more ec economy of what we call economy of strokes you use. It doesn't take as much. Smaller brush causes you to work more, causes more interest within the painting. So usually it usually with a painting, if I want, I you know, I'm not quite sure is it going to be soft or how I'm going to approach it. I start with a bigger brush and slowly start to work my brush down. Start big and slowly work it down. And uh, that will keep the um, the uh, painting starting out kind of soft and then you can build you can go down from there let's go in let's paint her um, let's start a nice brown here which is our red and black we'll get some yellows in that she has kind of an orangey color to it so a lot of yellow into that lean your brown a little bit more towards the red and yellow in there so she's kind of an orangey undertone there just like that so it's it's red and yellow and a little bit of black into that. It's a pretty color. We'll add some um, nice extender into that. And I'm going to follow along some of her movement here as I put in this undertone color. It's kind of a reddish brown. It could have a bit more yellow into some of that. I don't always like the colors to be absolutely, um, you know, pure. So I'll, I'll model and change them up a little bit. And so here I'll add a little more yellow just to the edges here to change that. And then we'll pull some of this in this way. And I, even though, you know, I don't have any of the uh, strokes here yet, let's come in just a bit closer. Even though I haven't got any of the, uh, um, the real, uh, you know, feathering done, I will, even with my initial coloring here, I'll, I'll kind of follow how I'm going to be painting her. So I'll go up and around like this. Let's just lose that edge just a bit. I'll go up and around and my brush will slowly follow that contour here. And we'll follow that contour of how we're going to paint right up by her eye. There. So if I get any kind of movement there, it will follow right in with what uh, she's doing there. Let's darken back back here a bit just she'll have just the edge of that wing and you'll pick up just maybe a little bit of that wing but we'll darken this back here and bigger strokes this time not as small a little bit bigger back through here so a little bit more dark a little bit more black I'm just sliding right into a little bit more black here and we'll do some nice uh, tail feather strokes here. I like to use the chisel and sometimes when I do these tail feathers I like them to really kind of fade off and uh, I, which I'm going to here on hers but I'll use these uh, just at the chisel here just to get some nice movement. I like this this photo of the of uh, her in that she has these lovely feathers sticking up like that. And then I'm just going to pull back just a little bit like that, just to start to soften some of those colors out here. And let that tail just start to fade away just a bit in there. And then we'll get back up here to our, our orangey 
brown, a little orange color in here. This is a beautiful orangey kind of color. Um, get some black down into that just so we get that model that up here and we'll put some of this undertone. This isn't the painting. This is just the, the first go through of colors. And I, when I find these birds, I try to find what's a, a nice medium tone under the under the feathering here that I can work with here. There we go. Just like that. We'll feather the pull in that edge just a bit there. That's good. And she has this lovely orange. Let's get a little more brighter orange here, a little more yellow, brighter orange band that comes right here before she goes to her lighter breast feathers. And so we'll we'll put some some yellows in here. Put some yellow colors in here, like like that. Just get this orange band in, let this fade. Back here, we will have a shadow from her wing back in there, which will be a shadowy color right in there. But uh, we go, and then she has this light breast area, which I'm going to key off of some of this. I'm just going to warm up some of my gray color over here that I was using, and we'll just lightly, and it comes in this V shape. And that's what I, I like this about her, is this little V shape of this coloring. Maybe a bit of white into that, just to lighten that up. Here, there we go. So that gets some of that, some of the coloring in her. And now she doesn't really have a, a you know, a, when I painted her before, they don't have a real light uh, eye ring on them whatsoever, and they have a lot of red or orange into their eyes, not completely black. And um, I tend to change that just a little bit. Because I do like, a, like and, and I say that, I like a white eye ring onto the birds because I think it makes them happier and stuff. So I will give just a little bit of one here to her. Um, first, what I'm going to do is take my number four round. This is my favorite burning brush. Favorite brush of all for burning here. And I'm going to tap in some dark here. Some nice black here into her eye. So I'm going to make her eye a little darker than what it is, but it might pick up a little bit of that orangey color. Just a bit of that orange-red right in there. So I'll pick up just a little bit of that. And now, when I paint these birds, that's the other thing is, I will paint and do these coloring several times. This is what gives them the interest. So what my first go through is just like a real, like a look at it. And then I start to refine it, refine it, refine it. And I paint back and forth and back and forth. I never go to paint something once. It's, it's a process. Everything that I do is a process. So I'm going to put a little bit of that orangey color in. We'll tap a little bit of our black back into that. So we'll pick up a little bit of that. I'm going to take some of this nice background gray, which would be a, a good color here. We'll add a light color coming around the eye ring there for just a second. We'll put a little dark tapped into that and then I'm going to come in and just tap some of that eye ring out like this with my browns, my brown coloring here before I get started on her. Reduce the size of that. Just reduce the size of that down like that. We'll take some of this gray, gray, right into our black here. And first, let's go kind of dark. And we're going to take the beak. Now, the beak, the line of the head comes down like this. So you want to take the beak into the head, into her head there. A lot of painters, when they do birds, they stop at the line of the head, and it doesn't. The beak goes into the head. And we'll do a few strokes here, watching that. For the lower part of the beak, we'll pick up a little more light and we'll just start working that lighter color in on there, like that. Okay. Then we'll tap in a little bit of that light. 
up here into the top and I'll go back in with my dark and start to paint some of that out so I'll go back and forth with my lights and darks here now I, I love this brush because I love to just take it at an angle like this and I can chisel through and pick up a little tiny bit of that light and I can use that to like uh, put on a very thin little detail of the the uh, line between the the upper and lower beak here like that that's good now sometimes I will take some of my let's get a little bit of the the grayish color we have out here it doesn't need to be the same gray just the grayish color that's somewhere right around close to what we had there and we'll come in and just paint back just a bit. I like the color in here, in and around her, in this area, to be pretty solid, to be pretty um, heavy. Uh, and that's what I'm doing right now, is I'm just coming in and really kind of cleaning her up, but getting a good color of contrast in here that I will soften out but this color of contrast right around her face, right up in there, then we'll soften that out. And that just gives her, uh, you know, there's a body of color on the background for her to play against and, and get the interest that we want to have. So we'll come down here. We'll revisit this beak again here in just a little bit. But let's just put a little bit of a light on here. A little bit of a light here there like that a little bit of a shine there back into some real dark here there we go that's starting to find it Just little movements like that are so very important. A little bit of the dark on the knees. You know, it's kind of like, you know, finding the beak and how the beak works on a bird. It's kind of like finding the smile on a person. Sometimes you, you find that. And what I do here is you see I'm painting it several times. And again, I'm doing that for interest. I know I'm going to be doing it several times because I need to get this slow modeling of color, especially, and it's little, I know, but I need to get that, and so I have to do it several times. Now we'll come back up into the eye, right up into, uh, like, this area here, and I'll put on a little bit more of the, the eye ring there. We'll put on just a little tiny shine here, the front part of the eye, and I usually make that, I usually, by the time I tapped on that, I make it too big, and so I have to, again, take it back down with a uh, little bit of the dark. Now, you don't want to come in and, let's come in a little closer here, but I don't want to come in and we'll move this right on top. There we go. I don't want to come in and uh, um, make that, mark that shine that's there I don't want it to be perfectly round because that will make her look like a bug it gives her a little bug eye so I want it to be a quick little strike like that okay and then uh, we'll start to work some darks and some shadows around it and start to tap into that eye ring and work that area there okay get that that's going to be good on her. Now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take some of my uh, my brown. My pure brown is red and black. Let's go into that color here. And let's come in and let's just deposit some of that as after I find my middle tone, I'm going to come through and find a little shadowing tone. Very much on her smaller little tones here, up and down. Here smaller little strokes here and I'll leave some areas with that showing that middle tone come in right around that eye ring and that's gonna create some contrast 
We'll pull a few strokes out. These are strokes that come out here like this, and then they come down. This will help us feather her up. Now, so these are shadows, okay? So I'm applying some shadows. There's gonna be her neck here, and right by her neck, the neck feathers will sit up on top of the body feathers right there. So I'll put in some body feathers there, and I'll let some of this shadowing on the neck just, just a little bit back here so it stays a little lighter, okay? Now, right up in through here, she's gonna get this lovely orangey tone back up in through here. So my mid-tone, I'm gonna come through and I hit my gray out there. Be careful, Dave. So I'm gonna take some of my mid-tone, like an orange, and I'm gonna come right through here and restate that just a bit, working that color right into that brown right in there, like that. Okay, so working the tone. I'm not blending. If you notice, I'm just doing strikes. I'm doing strokes and strikes. And this starts to lighten up in some areas, that little bit of shadow tone there. Okay, let's take a little bit of that tone out here. There'll be a little bit of that. We'll come down this way there. Okay, we'll have a little bit of that shadowy tone underneath that mane, but we'll let this area kind of diminish down as well. So where I get those lost edges back there, if I really want her to fade away, I gotta get some lost edges back there. Okay. So my back to my base brown here, black and the red, and then some yellow, a little bit of yellow here. That's kind of a pretty color. We'll lighten this up and take a look at that brown with a little bit of white. So it's a little bit here. Uh, go this way just a bit. It's just a little bit uh, kind of gray here, which means you touch too much black. So let's get a little bit of orange back into that. And that's kind of a pretty little color, maybe a bit more yellow into that. And now will get that a little bit more of a tan color there. So a little bit really quite heavier in the yellow. You get this kind of tan color. I really like that yellow in there. So grab that. Let's come through here and add some smaller little strokes just to put in some of this tone. This will come up right up into this area here. Work through There, see it's building color on her. Build color on them. A lot of people like how I paint the birds. They always like paint the birds and this is what I do. I go through tones, several tones. And so, you know, if, if I feel like I get rid of too much orangey color there, I'll go back and restate it again. But I, I go through these tones several times when I build these birds like this. So I get this modeling of tone through there. And you have to you have to give yourself the room the ability to do that, to let that happen. Just work those tones. So you get that nice modeling of those tones in there. And you can see it's building on her. Let's come in and, and um, grab some white right with our gray here. Just tap this this white color in here. And let's just work some quick little strokes down in here of some of the white. Just put on a little bit and we'll paint some of it back out, but let's just tap into that white. Here, this is her breast area, that triangle shape. I like that. So I'm just gonna, you know, for lack of a better word, feather it up. Just kind of get some movement in there, okay? And uh, again, work through the tones. Always work through these tones. Let's grab some of that white. Let's come back up over here. Maybe a touch more yellow in it. This will lighten up now our, our tone right in here. A nice light kind of yellowy tan color. We'll come in here and we'll start some of the feathering 
short, short little feather. No, some no. Watch the angles that I'm feathering, pulling out here like this. Here, pulling down now to match the curvature of her body. That way. Right up here like that. And then we'll add a few little strokes right in here. And see if you step them across a bit, you know, not not one right on top of each other. Kind of step them across. Try not eat to do it equally. They'll get kind of a feathery look to her there. We'll pull some down this way. Yeah, those aren't going to stay like that. That, but that, you know, does help me, you know, see some direction of it. But I'll, I'll be softening some of those out and getting another tone in there, as well. But we'll put some light here, and so I'll lighten up like this, and then I'm going to come back and restate shadows again. I do it like this several times. Okay, and we'll. Come in through here, there like that. Let's even take a little bit of our shadow tone and restate some of that shadow in there. Paint right up and through, tapping through some of those lights. And see that gives some nice movement to her there. Let's take a little bit of this, just straighten out that beat just a bit. That that's good. And back into some more light here. Now they do have an eye kind of like a eye socket thing that follows them back there. And I've got to put that on. A nice depression in the head for the where the eye is. So we'll have to put that on. We'll just lightly tap some of this into here. And we'll come back out here where that neck feathers are right in there now grab some of your other darker tone and let's work that through again this time smaller use more of the point of the brush work that through work these tones back and forth let's grab a little bit more light here a little bit of that into there change the tone a bit a little yellow a little light into that let's see and grab some of that gray that gray is a pretty color into her but I want this kind of undertone of this orangey color. So I may come in here and restate that again. Right in there. Just a little bit of it. There. Before I come in and darken down with that brown again. We could even cool that, that reddish brown down with a little bit of the uh, red violet into that. That's a nice deep dark brown here. And I like that brown, not just to tap into that eye ring a little. So you can see I get smaller now with my strokes and we'll tap some of this in. Some of this comes into her, breaks up some of this other that color. That's nice. We'll have that eye socket shadow that comes back like that. Some of this wrapping around the back of her head here. There, right into there. That's kind of nice. Some small touches of it right up by the beak that we can then touch some light feathers in just a minute. That'll play some contrast. So she has some, you know, they always have up around the beak, all the birds do. They get the small little kind of down feathers up around the top. And so I just use the tip of this little brush and just small little touches of light around to always indicate those um, little, little uh, feathers there. 
Let's just do a little bit of feathering here. There we go. And we'll come back in and set some more feathers. So you can feather with the light or you can give the feather the look of feathers also with the dark here. It's the play against the colors, the light and the dark. And like I do say, I'll set it like that and then turn around and pull some this way. So some of those colors will come in. And that's nice. Keep keep moving, keep moving around. Don't get focused in on one area of her too. So we want to move this out, further out. Here. There we go. Just nice brown again, right into here. And sometimes I'll use my finger to uh, move some of those colors in those areas. Here. That's what I look for, see that movement of that color back and forth through there. And then I'll paint it more into position. But I need to establish that underlying movement underneath everything here. There we go. I like that. I want to get that light on her a little bit a different tone than that tan, maybe a bit more on the orangey side here. There we go. And then to smooth some of her out too. So you, you set the motion, your movement and stuff in there and then of course you're going to grab some bigger strokes just to You don't need to have all the small little feathers. But again, that's sliding in with some of those tones there, and that's looking great. See, I'm getting just, see the tones changing. Don't be afraid to go back and forth. You'll find that that's, that's really pretty on here. Let's go back and state some light color again up in here. Let that come down. And then once I start to get the majority of her in where, or any of the birds where I start to like them, then I'll go out and paint the flowers and then we'll come back and revisit them again. We'll revisit the, the birds again to there, set some darks in there. She has these real kind of darks, a little more black and red into that area here. Real darks are going to come right up in here. And these darks also very important for the feathering up here around her head and stuff because, see, that makes them just kind of pop off. And then she'll have some bands of the flight feathers here. That'll come through. that come through there let's put some of our let's get our orange color back in here for that orange band that's on her body that I just love about these birds here and I might uh, you know a lot of times I will paint as I get away from that face I will paint the, the actual bird with a, a smaller flat or uh, like here's a six a four or a six Here's a, oh, that's a filbert. So I'll just use my six here. And we'll grab some of this orangey kind of color, push that in here. Model through, whoops, that's a bit red there. Here. 
you know, push into that. And you have to get, you know, once you start getting enough paint on the surface, as you're painting, you have to get enough paint on the surface, then you can get a lot of this modeling through. So, well, now I'm getting some paint. We'll model through here with into that orange with some brown kind of tones here. Model into that so you start to get that modeling tone. Here we'll grab some of this yellow here. Yeah, that kind of tone. That's that's really kind of neat. We'll leave that stripe there like that. Grab that orangey stripe there. That's that's kind of neat too. Let's leave that. Let's pick up this white and restroke this white up. So sometimes it's you know you, you wanna you work with a different brush like this, and especially you know the big brush like this going, you know gives a different softer look to some of those tones that are right there, and that's nice. Now she has little light tips to um, some of the wings here, so. We'll use this edge of this, and we'll put some dark brown and some white together there, and we'll just go over her here with this edge. We'll put some color into that, and then we'll strike this light just pull the um the light through your brush like this just put a little bit on that edge and then we'll pull through now we can also uh use the like i've, I've done on several birds you can use the um chisel edge you know take that four and chisel edge that and that works really well but it is a little perfect and so her, this time she is out of our center of interest she is heading up here and so I might want this wing to be a little bit softer I don't exactly know yet until I get some more going on in the flowers so but we might we might want to have this wing a little softer she'll have a little extra touches of the light they do little areas or touches of light like right up here so we'll have a little bit boom there and might put a few indications of some secondary flight feathers there a little bit here nice movement there onto that wing. Let's put a little bit of that darker movement and stuff back into this tail feather here. Right in there like that. That's nice. A little touch of this. Probably that. So working through with this big brush too works very nice for setting in some yeah that's pretty good on her like that works in for feathering as well and modeling of color and see each time I go back here I have a slightly different color I'm adding more and more and more interest to her let's take a little corner of dark and find that edge again in there Let's find this edge coming right around there like that. That's good. And then we'll just retouch her one more time. Then we'll go work on some flowers for a little bit and come back to her again. So you see I've come through. So we need to restate right up in here again. Then just a few little touches of the feathering around her. And let's go a little more orangey with the light here. That might be a bit much, but I kind of like it.
And so I say is you can just edge that brush slightly and put those little runs of feathers in. And you can, you know, a lot of bird painters will take some dark right, right in through here and paint back from the, the shadow back up into the light. And that softens that edge back there a bit. Let's go just a bit more orangey brown. Sets that in there like that. Boom, like that, and a bit of dark right here. And I think we'll let her set up for just a bit, and then we'll come back. And uh, because I might, you know, I, I know I generally like a little bit more going on into the face, but I want to paint soft flowers. So, you know, I generally like like this little bit of stuff going on right in and around the face. And, and, um, we might have to uh, come back and put some more on her. Let's put a little more orange right in here. I like that. I like this brush lifting off like that. I like going back and forth like that and lifting off. Boom. Oh, you gotta move on now, Dave. Quit playing with maybe a little more white. <laughs> A little more draggy up white here. Yeah, see, I like that character some of that stuff gives. And you know, one thing that I do with a lot of birds is right where the, and I'm going to turn her slightly here as you see there, right where the, like the, the down feathers or the feathers of the breast area here come up to the wing, I like to always pull a little light right up over that. And that kind of sets that wing right there into that body, see? And that's just something I like to do. I know, so that's good. Now that's, we'll uh, come back and revisit just a few little bits of her as we paint some of these flowers as we'll take some of the flower colors right into her. So I just have to tap that in there. There we go. Okay, so let's go in and work on some of our flowers and get some of those things in and, and some of the, the movement set for those. And um, my paper towels all followed me here. Now we'll uh, go back. I'm going to grab my tin. Let's set in and work some of the uh, flowers. We'll work big and then we're going to end up going to a little bit smaller brush here as well. Okay, so let's start in with the flowers and uh, come in like right into here. We're going to have areas of light. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to establish um, a white here. See what our white is going to look like. You know, like boom, right out here to the edges of this flower here. And boom, just right out like that. Now I want to keep this sheer. See how kind of sheer look that has there? Pulling on that. I want to keep that uh, feeling to this flower. Draw this around. I'll do a lot of drawing of the flower here with just pulling around the light and then just pulling some of that down. That's going to make them look a little bit more lacy and delicate here. Like that. A little bit more lacy and delicate. And um, we're going to have these lovely pinks and reds here and red violets warms and cools into these grays. We should just get some of those in right now, right up in here, okay? And lovely grays, 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 grays. Some of these blacks and grays. These are gonna be your flowers right in here. That's my plan for those. So we have cools down here, the blacks and the reds. And so when we drop down through these areas down through here, we're going to want this flower to get a little cooler right down here. Okay, so we'll just get a little bit cool. Pull some color in and out here to the cool here. So that's cooler down to there. We'll warm it up a little bit, head up to here, even up to some of these oranges and stuff up here. Let's even get more of an orange right before we go to that. 
right in there and let's get some of these warms up into here so cool down in through there warms into here move the color in and out like this in and out of those centers so you get a nice variation there that color some some brighter yellows like when we started here earlier right up in here nice warm yellows right up in here move in and out a bit so warm colors going down cooler colors right down into there let's get some of these grays right down into some red violets down here little gray red violets cool colors that will get some more ready violet there get some of that color working in that's your nice deep shadowing cool color it's got to head up slightly as it comes around the corner here. It's got to get a little bit warmer. Head right up to here. Put some of that. I still had some of that dirty gray in there. Let's get right up towards our warmer colors here. Right up in here. So you see I'm just modeling in some nice color here. Modeling in some of these colors. And that's just going to give nice movement here. That's nice. Now we'll go back. We'll pick up. Let's just drop it right in here. Some more of our white. And basically we just drop that white right along that edge. And then every once in a while just kind of pull that in to that flower. Take that corner of heavy little white like that. Pull around like that, and then just pull into that flower. And that's going to keep them a little bit light and, and lacy looking here. Some more white. Here, imagine this petal coming in here. There, like that. We'll come in, you know, we're going to have center petals here. Like that's going to be our center right there. This rose, but it's going to be, um, I mean, it's really, uh, I want it really kind of casual and loose here. So we'll pull some, we can pull some shadow down in to set that in place. Is very much like I painted the Rose of Sharon a long time ago with um, the uh, Bluebird. Painted some Rose and Sharon like this, very lacy. And so you use the light, kind of draw the edge of the petal, and then pull it down into your color, your modeled color, but don't cover all your modeled color up. Let that modeling of that color stay there and you can lift some out and you'll go right to your shadow you can lift out your edges like that get back to your shadows there very here and leave this movement into these petals these flowers like that In, underlay them in and out here. There, like that. Take a little gray. Pull and uh, so put a little shadow on your brush and lift out like that. These are beautiful ways. They're a little bit uh, harder to to visualize your petals, you know, and your flowers. But they're beautiful flowers like this. Let's take a little mottled yellow and red back into here. Model this in and out. Maybe a bit of, bit of red. Yeah, maybe a bit of red violet. So see, I model those together like that and just create this movement in and out. Yeah, like that. Then we just take the corner of our brush. Now you can do a small brush, you know, but the problem is when you use a small brush, 
I'm going to take that little extra. I like just a little corner of that white. Problem is when you use a small brush, it's too perfect. The big brush here will lay it out on here so it's not quite so perfect here. And so you can't always control that edge perfect. And that's what, that's what makes these pretty because that edge is not always in control here. There, like that. There. There we go. Kind of like lace edge roses here. Drop that little edge in. See? Sometimes just pick up and Let's just do a wider little petal there. Maybe a bit more, just a stroke of white across like that. Let's just lift off. I painted also flowers similar to this in uh, pal a book, the book of Palette of Flowers in a stroke piece with some Edwardian scrolls and it was quite pretty. I'm gonna tone this down just a bit. So we'll gray down just a bit here as we add a few little touches to this side of this flower and just lift off to those petals and boom put these petals in there there we go like that but these flowers have just you know real lacy uh, long wispy type of petals and so you you'll get that by leaving the little light edge to the petal and just wiggling your brush around and create these petals Let's build a little more light right in here. You can push out too. Push out like that. Push some of that color in there. That soft. You can stroke back shadows in. Put little edges of petals back in. You, they're very forgiving for how to paint them, so you can go back and forth here with some of your coloring with the darks and the lights. And like I said, just that's exactly how I do the birds too. Back and forth with the lights and the darks until I get the look that I like. Here we'll just... Up on a little light movement there. Boom, little shadow. Got to make sure you get some of that nice core, dark, deep, cool color into some of that working out too, because that is that cool, dark core is really what pulls your eye into the center of the flower here. this around a bit here and it's pretty see you just get those small little choppy strokes here at the end and kind of that's just pretty but you know let those yellows come in there let's get some more of that yellow up in here let those yellows come right up in here because that just gives that nice warm side of that flower there and like I say, paint it many times. Drag your light back up over into that. Create that movement there of that flower like that. Let's open up that center here. I have this closed up just a bit. I want to 
toss this around in here. Just get some of that move, that center opened up a bit in there. That'll get a little more, little bit more uh, tapping movement interest into that center. That's kind of pretty. Let's come over and work on the next one over here. We'll imagine that, and and uh, we still need to build a little bit on this one, like you know, edges and stuff like that in here. go and a little yellow and and so put some of that on like that then take a little shadowy color on your brush and just pull it back out paint it back out like that see just pull it back out and kind of separate your petals just a bit but these are lacy little flowers so you know these petals will Will, or lacy little petals, so they'll they'll kind of bend and go all kinds of places here. And add some light little pinky areas. Move those around. That's pretty. Now let's go over. Let's grab some light. Let's put this one on as a real light, like right in here. Pull this back. We want this flower though lighter, like right up into this area here, and then it's gonna then die away. We want to put our nice warm up in here. Paint our warm up in there. Let's keep the open part of the flower down in here. Right down in that area there of the flower. Okay. And uh, And as you paint these on and you look for contrast, you may see a little bit that you might want to add to your, your other one here and there. And there are just little. Little movements. Now let's build. Now we have... Uh, let's get our reds down in there. I'm amazed, you know, at, at how lacy they look, but how much paint they take. Um, you know, I've, I've painted these types of flowers several times, and it's it's neat. Uh, you know, their look is just wonderful, but they they do. It surprises me every time just how much paint they really take to get some of those looks in there. So. Let's get some of that nice cooler. Let's get some of that cool side so I have a nice warm side right down to a cool side here. Okay. And my nice deep cool center here working out, digging, pushing that in and out there like that. Um, I might go to my, I might just go to my four here. Like I say, as you get down, you can, you know, the four would, would come in and, you know, allow you to really put in some nice, light little uh, small edges and stuff like that in here. Which is, uh, so like right in here. So it's good to have that little four. probably paint this all though with the uh, with that six as well the six and it works nice but the four you, you just got to be careful you don't get too much if you use the four that you don't get too much of uh, uh, movement around in you know these back flowers here kind of dangerous with the fours the six will keep it a little softer but it does allow you to do little areas here that you can start putting little more so I imagine here like this is a uh, that's the center this is gonna be the center of the flower we'll take a little cool color we'll put a little bit of the light cool gray movement back in here like that flowers opening up there okay some movement here maybe into a little bit of yellow into that direct a little movement into that back in there like that. 
some big big strokes of petals here but the four you, you can just smash it and roll it around real easy like that so and some of these flowers that four is easy though try both you know I mean it's not like say you know one brush is perfect but try them try some different ones to till you find the one that you like that gives the effect and but you should try you know quite a few of them I just love that pushed around like that there we go make that a little more formal Clyde those together a bit let's cool this down we'll gray it down cool it down over here onto this side and we'll let that come out like that cool out almost like the peony roses or peonies here So right up in here is the main interest, and that's where you can really get that four to grab some of that small stuff there. There, like that. And let's grab a little bit of that right around to the back side there. But we'll let that fade off more than anything. And just give little hits of it out here like this. Just take a little bit of that light, just hit that edge just a bit. Let that fade off. Soft like that. That's pretty. Let's go down and do the other one here. So we'll grab some, let's get our, red, our reds and our red violet cooler down through here. And this one we want to uh, Really, uh, this one should start to fade away down through here. So, let's get a little soft and let that coolness, a little more gray cool into that. See, that's it. This and that's what I look for is that that nice high and low and modeling the color. Let's warm up up onto this side here, and then a little gray there won't hurt some of our yellows and our warmer reds up here that's your warmer area and let's get some of that yellow worked in there there we go and grab some of our whites and let's get a little more cooler gray out over here Just, just get some movement out here. We're just going to let that fade away like that. I just want some, see, just take this color, model it like that, and just get some outward, you know, moving movement going out here, which will make it look like some petals. And, and then don't paint it too much because we want the viewer's eye back up in here. And we'll drive their eye back up in here with some of this uh, petal edges here in just a moment up in that center a little bit more. Let's grab some of that nice green. Do a little bit of negative painting there. And let's grab a little more contrast to that, a little darker. Tap in a little darker. There we go. Even almost a brownish type stem can go through there would be nice. A nice look in there. Just an idea of it. Now we'll close that all up. Get that lighter one there. Pull the pull the uh, light edge. Pick up that white. Strike that light edge. Now this one we really want to 
you know, we really want to close it down pretty quick. I mean, get it darker pretty quick. Let's get some of that center in there again. Come this light, cool gray. Just make some ideas of the petals coming out here. There. And again, you know, I'm I always petal them a little different from each other. I don't like go around and around and around and around. I, I don't like flowers that are painted that way. And certainly there are some that look that way. I mean that are that way. But I like to do this. I like to work the colors like this. You know. Take a little bit of this paint in reverse. Maybe add a bit more of that brighter yellow. And I'll use my finger to work stuff in and out too to soften some movement, especially on these back ones like this. They can, they can get some of this movement kind of softer. We'll put like there's this petal of this one underneath that one, which will keep, will give a little movement. See, just use your brush lightly like that to get some movement. Don't do any more than that. Then we'll put the edge of this one over that, and it can be soft like that and still sit on top of that. See, it can be soft and still sit on top of that if I don't give that one underneath too much movement. Okay, if you give it too much movement, it can't sit on top. And so I, I start to take up just pure white and set it some places on my palette that I can just poke into the color and drag it around and lightly skip it around too for some movement of these petals. There. There we go. Just give some soft, and then just let that fade away out there like that. That's pretty. See, sometimes you stick your finger in that. This happens like that and looks, and just leave that. We might want to have just a little bit of movement. See, just lightly with the brush like this. Don't make, don't make petals. Just give some movement and let the viewer's eye say where the petals are. If you want, you can make a little bit of a petal edge here and there. Take some pure white. This idea of a petal edge or a full size petal there. There, like that. Some ideas here. Just some movement. Just let those go. Just let that all go back here. There like that. We'll grab a little more like yellow color right in there. Swirl a little bit of the petal coming out like that. That's good. Let's grab a little bit of that coming into this one. Real cool. And a little of that yellow again in there. Some light coming out. Almost like little peonies there. And let's grab a little yellow. And then back into our white on top of that. So you get this lovely color warm color in there see that just captures all in there that very very soft up here at the uh, top very very soft now my 
mine are also here are a little bit round and so I want to take some off just uh, so they're not quite so they don't quite look so round here I have a tendency you know it comes from all the years that I, I painted uh, folk art styles and everything I have a tendency to paint round flowers and I'm always trying to, to break that habit but it's taken a long time I know it and I, and I don't want to do it but yet I do it so As a matter of fact, we can get rid of some of that look by taking some leaf right in here and just bring this petal edge in. There, I'm going to let this leaf come in here, and that will help this one not quite so round. I just love painting these flowers and, and using these types of techniques because you can go back and forth and back and forth, you know, as your painting needs it and evolve it. Um, it's just so much fun. There's nothing that you're doing that you, you, uh, you know, you can't change. There. Take a soft pink. Nice movement there with that. Not quite so round. And um, go back with something close to our background back up here. Take some of that out as well right there. See how that changes the feel of that when they're not quite so round. Changes the whole feeling of the painting. Build these just a bit more in here. That's pretty good. Now this is a little bit more of an edge right here since that one is closed. So anything that's right up in here, give it nice edges. Anything that's out here, you can start letting those edges fade away and get lost as they go back like that. Okay, so let's go up and quickly uh, state this this one up here we want this one mostly lost a little bit of yellow in and around here uh, quick uh, movements of the brush I'm even using my bigger brush here so this one just stays soft here okay just pull in and out work it in and out like that quick movements And um, he will back paint some of that out. I love that. You know, you just lift some of that right out there with that with your shadow. Just put any kind of shadow in and just lift that out. So you can take any your brush with any kind of corner like that and just drop that in real quick. And it's confidence, it's power. Just put it in there. Just you know, it's confidence and power. Push that in. Just kind of tap those around a bit here. Get some of that movement, nice soft movement here. Just create that movement. A 
and shadow to pull any of it out. I want to keep this one here, and it's getting a I'm playing with it a bit too much here. I want to I want to keep everything soft, so I'm going to reduce the movement just with my finger here. I'm getting a little bit too much going on back there. I want that flower, yeah, just like that, to sit back there like that. We might take our small little brush here and just draw on the idea of some forward like little bowl of the petals of this and just leave that it's hard to leave it but just leave that right back there like that so just sitting into the, the back let's come over and do the same type of thing over here with this one a little bit into its center even take some of the light and that gray here just that around, look into our center color, that soft back there, put a little bit of the yellow in because it's that yellow is the bright color, but just a little bit of that in, just add that movement that let the uh, edges of it there stay soft and fade away. And um, let's just quickly, you know, state like a, the edge there of a bowl, the edge of the petals here, something like that. Even pulling down like that. This one here, like that. There. Just real quick, let's lighten up that front just another little stroke. Just a touch of movement in and out there. And that's a nice. That, see, it goes real quick like that. Let's go in and let's work on some of our leaves. Now I'm going to start. I'm just going to make up a big old pile here of uh, some of our greens, of various greens here that I can work into. Lighten it up, gray it up here. Here's some of the nice grays. Put some colors out like this. Gray this up. So you have some ideas where you can see, you know, the big thing is you put some colors out there, move this around, have some nice darks out here, and that'll help you, um, you know, see your colors, see where you might want to uh, go or what you might want to do, you know, with your colors. Let's uh, come right in here. Let's just edge a bit here. Just, you know, same type of thing. And I'm a, I'm a firm believer of whatever you do to the flowers, you should do to the leaves. So you should be painting them with the same types of techniques. And, uh, you know, what, what you do on one, you do on them all here. And leaves can also, there's all different kinds of ways to paint leaves. A lot of times I like to, like, come out like this and draw a, a vein line. When I paint leaves like this, there's all kinds, like I said, and, and pull out of that vein line here to set up a, a light side and a dark side to the leaf. But I will also come out onto this side here and tap in one or two little edges here that are pulled in like that. You can also pull in little highlights or lights into it here like that. That's kind of pretty like that. This one over here is a little bit more yellow, so let's get into a little bit more yellow. And that's what you want to do to make any kind of pretty little composition. Your leaves should change. And you can just, like, leave one side here. One one side here, slightly darker, maybe just a little touch or so, right out there onto that one. Maybe a little touch of a different green right there. 
And again, we'll pick maybe some of that yellowy green we'll add right in there on that one. And that's kind of pretty there. Let's get a little lighter gray. Don't like to, um, I don't like to uh, let a vein line go all the way out and because it kind of cuts the, the leaf in half. So I, I don't like to do that. Come up here. Get a little bit more going on in that stem. Idea of that stem there. And you know, you just add little twiggies, or you can add, you can go in and add perfect little thorns and stuff like that if you want. I'm not going to. But um, maybe an idea of a little septal or something like that coming down. Very soft back here, just very soft, just, just an idea of the shadow there, like that. Step back just a bit, capture a little more feeling of the flowers here. And um, very, very soft gray. You can come in and negative paint like this. Any of those colors, and you can see those, that negative painting like this actually paints the uh, edge of the, the rose there. Soften that out like that. Here, let's put a little bit of yellow in there. I like that little yellowy color. Pull out that there. Maybe a little bit of gray. I like that gray into that those leaves there, into the centers of them. That looks nice. Let's grab a little green. Yeah, maybe a bit darker. So I'm I'm always looking at my colors changing here, and you know little touches like I do in the centers of the roses when I'm painting there. Just colors changing. I'm looking for that. Let's evolve those colors. Let's change these. See, it helps when you get all of this out here: yellow greens, gray greens, and you can work back and forth into these colors here and find the ones that you might want to have here. Find here some leaf shapes. Here, let's get a little bit more yellow and gray it. Yeah, like that. We don't want to forget, and I'm going to put them on right now so I don't. Nice, uh, and originally, I mean, these are kind of orangey in color, their legs. I'm just going to uh, give an idea for her legs. I'm not going to make it a big major statement here. We'll just make a quick little idea like that. We'll set a few uh, feathery strokes here up over the top of them. There, set those in and, you know, just, I don't make, you know, bird's feet, they're, they have these, really these huge, uh, you know, almost like reptilian claws and that hold on to everything. Their feet are so huge and grab on everything. And I just I, I just don't like to paint them realistic like that. So I like to uh, keep them a little softer. That's what I like to do. Let's drop in some yellow here. Let's get a little bit of that gray yellow here. Love that gray color on these leaves. That's pretty. And 
get that. Make sure they have a little bit of an idea of a vein line. Yeah. Boom, out here. I always think, I'm always thinking when I'm putting on these like this, okay, find the vein line and you can just come down and find the vein line right with dark. Find the vein line, maybe streak out a little bit from that vein line. But out here, these are getting softer too, so we should, you know, maybe hit them with a little bit of that lighter gray which I'm really like doing, and it's making them softer. So, you know, these can get quite a bit softer out here like that with that light gray. Because it's heading out, and you, you're heading out away from the, the uh, design. So we could just let these just go out. Just a little boom. So we'll just find like a half and half. And a lot of times, you know, the leaves are kind of like half and half. You'll have, you know, a shadow side and a light side. Just almost cut the leaf in half because of the light source and stuff, where, where that light source is. And, and again, I, I don't like to... Uh, find that vein line too much half and half so I might just do a little bit out there by the tip of one and so I don't cut it in half there's a, a lot of paintings I see uh, artists cut the leaves in half and that can be that can make the leaf very uh, distracting to the painting if it cuts in half too much and again I'm gonna go right out there by that tip here I'm gonna take a soft yellowy green and just really get quite light with that and fading off because I want those leaves to be just ideas of them. I don't want those to be any part of the, you know, the, the main part of the design. I want, I want these to be soft, no interest to them. There we go, like that. Very soft. There we go, just little guys. Little soft ones. Maybe a idea of a coming off of that one. there coming behind it and some stuff might be behind there you don't know maybe a few more little leaves and stuff back behind here Don't want to fill up that center too much. I like the um, the working here of, of leaving some of this, leaving some of the air space, the negative space in the center. I like that, so I don't want to fill up too much in there. But it's just giving you a nice, lovely go right in here of everything. There. So you can really do that negative painting to start looking for, you know, areas and to uh, really kind of see that any kind of that negative painting brings more interest right out to here like this and, you know, uh, porcelain. What I really started learning this was porcelain painters do this a lot. 
And watercolor painters do this a lot. So we can take that right into our painting that we do like this as well. We can pull that in as well, right in. Yeah, that's coming very nice. Very nice, soft, uh, flowery uh, units here. I want to put, um, let's go back to our little form. I'm going to rinse it out here. You don't see me do that very often to rinse out, but it's gotten my kind of sticky, so... Put a little bit of uh, the orangey color back into here. Yellow and the orange. I'm going to come back in and just restate some nice bright colors right back up in here, up into this area. This is my center of interest of this flower. And then I'm immediately going to work some lights through it. These are my, this is my center of interest up here, so. Just looking through. What else did I need finally? And then we'll, we'll go look at the bird one more time. What do I need up in here? And that these colors should evolve to that cool color here. So pull some of that warm color out like this. Some of that warmth is pulling out so that then it starts to pick up the cool there. And I'll take a little bit of gray. So it shouldn't just go boom, boom, warm, cool. It's, it's changing, the color changing. Take a little bit of the gray here. Just add a little movement into those. There, like that. There. Last little bits of the tips of those petals. Those look pretty nice. Maybe, um, A little bit right in here, just because this is a big flower, and that's a and how much you do that's up to you now. The last thing I'll do is I'll come back in here and let's get back to our browns. I'll just go through and make sure that I have the, the dark shadowing and the feathering on her that I want. She does have quite a bit of dark. And so I can see I can come back now and just re revisit just a few of those little bits of those shadows. She has this lovely shadow that comes right down here by her beak. And if I take out too much of those little bits in the top up there. I'll just reset set those. But sometimes it's nice just to do it with the corner as opposed to around, which is really, you know, it all depends. If I, if I, I, I do it with what my feeling of the, of the painting is. So I'm using this four in here in, you know, for all the little details and stuff of the petal. So I might want to finish up some of her with that four too. So you know, she doesn't get finished up with the round in there. Both of them work, and you're the artist, you got to choose. But that's what's kind of going through my head here is, you know, I just used this four. So, you know, it's kind of nice to come back and, and say, okay, I've got to use this four. And I'm going to add the last little white streaks now. Because remember, we said on this wing, we weren't sure how white we can do it until we get the flowers. Well, now I know I can get her a little bit more white out in through here in that wing because she can support it because we have some nice contrasty flowers here. Yeah. So it is okay.
just take that chisel. There. And hers are, you know, I mean, they are white. Uh, and, you know, you have all different kinds of these little guys. Some of them are the white spotted ones and these tohis. Hers are um, just white, white. And that nice little white ding right up there. Comes up there. And see, those worked nice before until I got those white flowers on. That might have been too much. Now that I have those white flowers on in place, those look pretty nice. Those are okay. Yeah, that's okay. And that's why it's always good to give yourself the ability to come back and revisit something again. There. There we go. Give yourself the ability to revisit. I could put a little more detail right on that, that stroke of feathers there. There. That there. That's pretty. I think I kind of like everything that's going there on her breast area there with the white, but I might want just a more powerful little white right in there. And that's just because so she can come up against those flowers. Right there. Let's just pull that down. Boom. That's nice. And it, the white just kind of fractures off. So we do this, this small little touches like that. So the white and the orange band there just kind of go together there a bit. Finish that off and then we'll some of that and and uh, I will do a little bit more feathering right in there grab my little number four and let's grab just a light tan color that's a little bit wrong Needs to be more brown. So I don't take that off. I just I'm just gonna paint it back in place with some dark. I never really take off. You haven't seen me ever take off. I I always paint use it. Even if I make a mistake with the color, I just use it in the painting. There we go. And I like on the on her the always around that face to get that little bit of feathers that just kind of fly right around the face here. I'm just going to put some color in there to clean that up and then just do a little bit of feathering. So you can see my thought process here, you know, as I go to, as I go to the finish, I start to really looking at the at the bird in small small touches and small feathers and looking at her there a little bit little touches there that's good she looks pretty good there i was going to put a little bit more of a highlight there not going to. I might touch just a little bit more of a black in that part of her eye and maybe a tiny touch to that eye ring there with just a little bit of color. Just a tiny touch. Oh, I stuck my finger in a leaf. There. 
Usually I use a little bridge or a mall stick because this is all wet, but don't have one right with me right now, so I can't use that. So, so there I have that. Now I'm just going to, let's step back just a bit, and you can see this, you can hardly pick up this gray from going to the white here like that, and that's what I want. That's what I wanted in this painting, a different feel to it. I'm going to take some of my white, though, and just come out here like this with some of my white. And I have a couple of, you know, sketch lines and stuff like that. But I love the, I love the whites, too. I love to do this with the whites and carry those in and out like that. And those add movement in and out of your design as well, like that. So white can come through like this and see how it, and it, you get that movement in, into your painting. So, I mean, it's just another thing I like to do. I love the backgrounds. I, I don't want to get too much movement in here, but see, now that I have my flowers done, I can look at, you know, how much movement that I do, do I depart into here and uh, still paint my, uh, my flowers. So, still get my flowers the way I want them. Let's get a little light right up there so still have some nice flowers. You can just lightly brush over the outside receding edges, especially if they start to dry up. Outside receding edges can get just a little bit of touch of that just to help them recede. And that's going to pretty much do it for this painting, what I wanted to do on this painting, what I wanted to accomplish with it. I hit pretty much my goals that I wanted to do. Um, you could, uh, you know, look to, to soften out. I'm going to leave this just uh, pretty much clean. You know, a lot of times I take color out and, and uh, you know, do some, some things, you know, soften things out. But I tend to do that a lot. So I'm, I'm going to leave this one this time just pretty much clean out through here, ending on, what I mean by is by ending on some uh, leaves and stuff out there. So the, the design looks a little bit different. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, watch it as it dries down. Sometimes your whites will dry down and, and, there, and they might uh, become a little bit softer. If that happens, you bring it back with a shadow. You just bring, uh, uh, you use any kind of your soft shadows, like in here you put a little bit more soft shadow. Because what is it that makes a white look white? shadow it's the dark okay because you can't see white paint on white so if our background's very light so if you need more you need more shadow okay there you go i'll see you uh, next time here at the dance art studio we have lots of dvds and again if you ever have a question or anything like that don't be afraid to write to our studio sometimes it takes us a little bit to, to answer those but uh you know because we're on the road or traveling or teaching someplace but we'll try to get to you and uh you know it's kind of fun to read those and and um Join us over on Global Art Supply. We have a forum on there. You can uh, show your paintings up, and we have lots of teachers in there that can help you with that. Okay? And then we also have our YouTube channels. We have a new premium YouTube channel where you can learn a lot of the educational uh, videos that we have there for a monthly subscription. You can watch those. And again, attach us to the forum. You can ask questions, and we can help you with your learning. Okay? So uh, I'll look forward to painting with you next time here at the Jansen Art Studio. And... We have lots of other birds for you to study, too. Just keep painting and painting and painting. Try, move color around, get quick, and uh, you'll be able to do it. I'll see you next time. You have a great painting day. Bye-bye.